Just extend to that. Let me give, a, let me give you a, a small story. Let me give you a small data point about, about the opportunity that are available, that's available for developers today on the Microsoft platform, you know, which is actually driving up a massive adoption enterprises. You know, again, coming back to the original story or the original point as to how enterprises consume or enterprise current today. Let me give you an example here. And this will tell you. Do you know what these are? These are the installations of the various OSs in the market today. 32 million is the Mac OS. 196 million is the iOS. 345 million is the Android base. And 730 million is only Windows 7. Only Windows 7. I'm talking about XP, I'm talking about anything about that. Only Windows 7. Why I'm painting this data point is because 730 million installations of the latest software means that this is the potential market for Windows 8, which means that from an application perspective, you can imagine the tremendous amount of data that will be transformed via apps and consumed by both enterprises, their stakeholders, their employees, and so on and so forth. That's a huge, huge market out there. What's driving all this, I told you, you know, from our side, from the vendor side, you know, we wanted to create much more uh, a fair amount of, as I say, uh, a designing capability made available to the enterprises today so they can consume things in a much more healthier manner and in a much more easier manner. So that's why we bought out this Windows 8. I don't know how many of you all have used Windows 8. If you see Windows 8, very fast, fluidic start screen. Works on anything, touch, mouse, keyboard, whatever you can talk about. Whatever you had seen in Windows 7 is something we have even better in Windows 8. This is a new way in enterprises are connecting today. In India alone, close to about 300 odd million can, uh, uh, installations that we have currently on Windows, uh, prior to Windows 8, is something we are targeting to Windows 8. You can imagine what's going to happen when 300 million odd and plus the additional future uh, computers move on to this kind of OS. The consumption, the application scenario exchange that happens between the OSs and between the social networks, like Yammer, like LinkedIn, like Facebook, including the cloud computing services like Office, Office 365, SkyDrive, it's going to be tremendous. It's going to give productivity a new meaning at the end of the day. Similar is with the phone as well. 150,000 Windows phone apps, huge. Who's consuming this? It's enterprises. Today you find purchase orders being released on the phone. That's the way enter enterprises are consuming today. You have, you see something from, from Indian example, if I give you, you have something called Ramco on demand, an ERP on demand. Ever thought of that earlier? What is causing this? It's the one that causes this is the wonderful devices that we carry, the Windows devices that you carry, the Windows OSs that is enabling them, and of course the cloud the Azure cloud that I, can, that I can talk about. So this is the way, you know, um, enterprises are moving today. Now, moving again, you know, I had about 10 minutes and I want to cover uh, a few of the topics as well. So what, what is it, why is it people are moving towards this and how, do, how are we helping developers out there, how are we helping companies out there? It's very important that you all need to understand because I can understand, I can see and uh, looking at the audience profile here, a lot of you are partners, a lot of you are partners of Microsoft, a lot of you are intended to be partners of Microsoft as I was seeing the number of people who interacted with me before I came here. You need to understand what the advantage we bring to the table. First of all, you need to understand what Microsoft is in India. With 6,000 people, present in almost all the states with six business units, mirroring what is there in US, India is one of the most top most priority market for us. We work with about close to about 2,000 odd ISVs, about 1,000 odd SIs in India. ISVs is independent software vendor, people who make products in India. We work with startups. We work with multi, our, our, one of the core tenets of our existence in India from a CSA perspective is to ensure that we actually create innovation in the ecosystem. And that's where we have gone down. We have gone down lowest level in the educational institutions to create something called an MIC with the clear-cut outcomes. We want to foster innovation at the lower side. Why do you want to foster innovation at the lower side, at the, at the lowest point of the ecosystem? Simply because we want people to create applications which can address some of the locally relevant problems that we as Indians are facing, that our enterprises are facing. 
a solution built in America will not work in India or may or may not work in India. We believe in that. We want to ensure that we get local guys to build it. We want, we want to ensure that the local guys build relevant solutions so the enterprise are able to adopt those low-cost solutions. This is the way we, we are trying to push the industry to move forward. This is the way we are trying to push innovation across the enterprises today. If I move ahead, if I as I told you, working with partners, partners have benefited tremendously by our partnership. Each rupee that Microsoft makes, close to 9.79 rupees is made by the partner. Is it important for you to know that? Because as partner, you will understand your success in creating an application that is going to help Indian enterprises leapfrog to the future can be best partnered, can be best secured when you partner with a giant like us. So again, why, why, if, you, if, you, if you just recollect what I spoke to you in the last five, ten minutes, I gave you the flavor as to how the industry is moving, the consumers are moving. I gave you a flavor as to how the industry transformation is happening from an overall business side of things. And then I also told you about what Microsoft is doing at this end. And lastly, I wanted to just tell you all about how working with Microsoft is the most advantageous aspect for all of you all. We are standing at, as Raj was saying in the morning, we're standing at the cusp of such a nice, or, or, or the cusp of a, a perfect fusion, if you say, or a perfect, uh, you know, perfect storm, as they say, where it is for us to kind of seize the momentum and help the enterprises out there build applications, and help them consume applications at the lowest possible cost. It would be a shame to let go of the opportunity. And you as partners, I would definitely want you all to talk to us, talk to vendors like me, not just to Microsoft, but our vendors like us, build applications, consume applications as Raj was as going in the morning, and help this all this better, make a better place. So with that, I'll just end my 10-minute speech. I had more to con content to cover, but then I just shortened all this because of the time lag that we have, the, the time uh, constraint that we had. But I'll be hanging around here for a couple of hours more. Should you have any information, any questions that you have, please feel free to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now, uh, I'll request Mr. Rajrishi Chatterjee, Vice President, Atos India. Mr. Rajrishi Chatterjee, or Raj, as he prefers to be addressed, recently joined Atos India as Vice President. He is responsible for testing services delivered from centers in Europe and India and managing Atos Alliance with Microsoft in, in India. Prior to Atos, Raj worked in a leading organizations that include Cognizant Technology Solutions, Usha.com, ABB, Larson Tubro in different roles in India and abroad spanning 24 years. During his 12 year stint in Cognizant, he grew their CRM practice manifold and was instrumental in winning and delivering some of the largest global rollout programs of CRM, BPM and MDM applications for Fortune 50 clients in Pharma insurance telecom domains. Raj keenly followed technology trends and has been a guest speaker in different CIO events and industry connect sessions for the executive MBA program run by IM Calcutta. Mr. Chatterjee. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, distinguished panel. Firstly, an apology. I really should have realized my introduction should have been trimmed in proportion to the content I'll be giving. So apologies for that. And on a lighter note, and while we are talking of mobility over here, I'm really doing a big disservice to mobility today. I'm outside my office where people are going to reach me. I am mobile in the unpleasant sense where I'm away from work, and both my mobile cell phones are switched off. So uh, on that note, uh, uh, ATOS is probably in, uh, participating in this event for the first time, so thank you, Bengal uh, Chambers. So I don't want to make it a sales pitch, but for those of you who may not be knowing about ATOS, am I audible? Yeah, thank you. Uh, ATOS uh, is a French uh, company which uh, really has the bulk of its workforce in Europe, and we have about 10,000 uh, uh, employees here in India, globally doing a revenue of uh, 9 billion euros. And 
I'm not uh, so big a presence in India with just about 10,000 uh, workforce that is catering to the requirements of customers overseas as well as the Indian market. Indian market, we are about uh, 70 million, uh, if you will. So with that, and there's actually, I would want ATOS to be remembered for a better reason. I won't bombard you with statistics or numerical data here, but probably the last slide is when we get to there, uh, we can talk about it more. So coming closer to the context, uh, as we talk of mobility, you know, probably the very common notion is, yeah, because we have mobile devices, tablets, etc. so we need to find applications and we need to exploit that. Step back a little, I'm sure, and I recall, a uh, few years into my job when I was attending such conferences, a lot of the work would be pending for those of us who attend such conferences and found a lot of work pending for us. Today the expectation is, no matter where you are, you are a mobile executive, work shouldn't be pending. You got the mobile device, you need to give an approval to a travel request or maybe respond to an email, you should be capable of doing it. So I think the need for mobility or the business need for mobility has all along been there. It's today when we see technology gearing up, then we are finding an exploitation for it. But this need for having mobile applications that business has forever been wanting solutions, it, what was missing was probably the platform which enabled such solutions. So that's a very apt uh, saying, uh, the mobile train has left the station, are we on it? So I said the top drivers continue to be, and this is a survey which is from a CIO strategy forum, which says the top drivers of mobility investments, and you can say enabling employees to be more responsive to customers, as well as internal needs, if you will. And uh, of course, there are the IT uh, enabled uh, requirements, which I'd like to spend some time, uh, and some of the speakers have very eloquently touched upon. Any enterprise, if you will, if you can, I hope it's uh, legible there. So if you broadly break up, you have your own internal workforce, you have your sales and partner channels with whom you're working. So that's really the people-centric piece of it. There is also the machine-related uh, mobility. So we have supply chain, logistics, trucks on the road, which are taking your goods and services to your end customers. So if you broadly look at these, there is the compelling need for mobility-based solutions from both of, or really all of these quarters. We've looked at enterprise of the future, really reflecting on how your workforce is distributed, either in offices, in the field. And the first one is feet on the street, pretty much the sales reps, the service rep organizations, whose major part of the day is spent in the field trying to service customers or probably follow up on leads. And then you have people like us who would probably be uh, not somewhere whole day in the field, but we have to be wherever there is a need to be. So that's the uh, office-based workforce. And then you also have the vehicle in the street. We have some interesting uh, uh, instances to talk about. In fact, what uh, Rajbala was mentioning in the morning, there are already real life implementations of it, which I hope I'll be able to take you through real quick. There are a lot of jargons over here, and I'm not one who really likes jargons, but I think while most of them are self-explanatory, the last one, what we are referring to is mobile device management and mobile application management. So we, while I said that, yes, business has always been wanting mobility solutions, as we have a plethora of devices coming in, they bring in their own way some other challenges. And how do you have so many devices working, which and so many speakers have uh, very rightly touched upon that today many of us are probably carrying multiple devices. Uh, my previous speaker, Rajneesh, just mentioned he wouldn't want to carry two devices, one for his office and one for his personal use. Now, if at all there is this unification that needs to happen, how do you at all do a mobile device management and a mobile application management? So in the wake, as technology adapts to these business challenges, it also throws up some interesting opportunities which need to be addressed for uh, this to really gain uh, the uh, momentum that we're looking at. So, I picked up uh, some of, and what you see over here are actually four verticals or lines of businesses where we have today actually implemented solutions. This is not vaporware, this is not white papers or PPT, but there are actually implemented solutions. And I'll take one of them and tell you how it's been implemented. So an automotive company, this is uh, really to service uh, the people, uh, the, wherever the cars are and if they suffer a breakdown, or there is a maintenance required, uh, that is the data acquisition from the field uh, which is gathered. 
A very interesting use, and actually Rajbala mentioned about it. We are implementing a project for an insurance company where based on the driver's driving habits, there's a continuous feed that goes to the insurance company and then they decide what should be the premium in the subsequent renewal. Uh, manufacturing company, the best example I can take uh, talk of is uh, you have all these hospitals where you have MRIs, X-ray machines. No hospital can afford a breakdown of the MRI scanner even for a minute. And these aren't that you can carry costly spares and you can have someone fix them. So the service engineer who is out there in the field, he literally has to get calls and depending on the closest vicinity uh, the service engineer is, the lead is routed to that service engineer for him to go and attend to the call and he carries the most essential spares in the boot of his car, he has to go and serve that. So uh, it's a very critical component of service and the entire operation, the end users, uh, and service to the end user is heavily impacted by this. Financial services company, actually come September here in India we will be having the first I'm not uh, allowed at this point in time to share the name of the organization, but it is uh, a mutual finance uh, company which is going to actually have its agents who visit customers when they take their uh, health examination records. They are going to consult in real time some knowledge worker back in their office to decide what should be the premium and if at all the risks are commensurate or not instead of making the hapless customer wait for a few days and say, sorry, your insurance has been denied. So that's one, going to be one of the first implementations. And uh, fleet logistics company, here is a case where we are implementing. We don't have such a situation here in India, but I do hope we will get there someday. This is for a port in uh, Germany. Uh, I mean, uh, not in Germany. This is for a port in uh, uh, Europe, in some other country in Europe where you have all the uh, trucks that come to unload their cargo and they have to wait depending on when they get a chance and when is the next uh, slot going to be available. The port wants to optimize the waiting time for the incoming fleet as well as the onloading time onto the ships. So the drivers of these different uh, shipping companies they have their trucks and the drivers are informed that what would be the waiting time at this point in time, so which particular gate should you go so that your waiting time is minimized. And this is a real time communication that's happening with an integration to the back office application of the port to optimize the loading times uh, that would happen. So where it leads us, and I'll just take one of them, this is closer home about uh, the uh, Salesforce Automation has probably been the first adopters of uh, mobility, if you will, where the uh, field force is constantly required to interact with clients. I remember the case of an Indian pharma company where many years back, even before we were talking about mobility, they said they did not want to issue laptops to their field personnel simply because the laptop allows storing of data on the laptop and when the sales rep wants to quit his company and before he joins another, he ensures he's taken a backup of the data that's on his laptop. So they wanted to ensure that if there was any device which did not allow a bulk storage of data but rather gives him the mobility to talk to his customers yet not be able to have a whole lot of offline processing, if you will, or storage of data, they were looking at that. And this I'm talking at least about five or six years back, even before we had... Uh, I mean, uh, respectable bandwidths available for exploitation of mobile solutions. A paint company, again, this is a very Indian scenario. They were offering uh, that we will give you customized paints. You don't have to buy necessarily a fixed shade of paint. You can decide what exact paint shade you want. So they, the sales rep on the field, when he visits a customer, he would take a picture of the customer's uh, room or the environment and he would uh, really share it instantly with his back office and the people there would in turn say, okay, given this existing color of the room, this is the shade that matches best. And that may be a mix of two or three standard shades. It may not be a readily available shade. So this kind of a real-time communication between the person who's there in the field and the customer was a very unique exploitation. And I have to say that 
when I said business has forever been wanting these kind of solutions, these are actually very many years old. We didn't have a solution which would readily address the need. But today with all the mobility and the uh, smartphones that we are talking of, I see this becoming a more, uh, a bigger reality than uh, what it had ever been in the past. So as this uh, picture shows, the leads would be captured or the leads would be routed to their contact center and whoever the marketing company is. They would route the leads based on the proximity of the concerned sales rep in the field or the service engineer in the field. They would see how many calls are pending and once the sales rep visits a customer, he can communicate with the knowledge worker back in his office to understand if he is not equipped with a solution. Rajbala was talking about uh, augmented reality where somebody can exactly know how to fix a radiator uh, if he doesn't know, if he's not so equipped. We have a similar situation where the sales rep, if he wants to consult what should be the exact response to a specific customer situation, he is able to do that, upload the information, and then let the subsequent processing happen. So as we talk of all of these good things about the business exploitation of mobility, it takes me to some pertinent questions. I mean, a few months back we had Infocom in Calcutta and maybe some of you would have present, uh, been there. When we look at all nice stories said, but what is it that's inhibiting or today the adoption of mobility for enterprise applications? There are three things that come to my mind off the top of my head and this is a very personal view. Some of you may have had different experiences. Uh, Take a step back. When you want to respond to or vote for Indian Idol, you will probably use your smartphone. Will you use your smartphone to file income tax returns? You will not. You will prefer to sit in front of a terminal which has an assured connectivity and you have all the time in the world you can look through and browse through the different menus. That's the application that you would want to do in a thoroughly connected manner, not in a mobile, using a smartphone probably. So if you analyze this situation, Single step transactions are probably very easily done on a mobile device. So alerts, voting, reading emails is where you see the current day exploitation. The, what is it that's inhibiting the adoption of mobile devices for enterprise applications? So if you now dive deeper what is inhibiting, there are a couple of things. On the device itself, no matter how smart we talk of the devices, the usability or the user interface is still not what you would probably get on a big screen. And when you're looking at filing your tax returns, at, in the same breath you're probably going through a complex workflow. You're probably looking up, yes, your PAN number or you're probably looking up 10 other things, the 26 AS files of uh, data filed by your uh, employer or banker. So you're looking up other sites and then taking a decision on the spot and interacting to the responses you get. This interactivity or you know, the usability because of the small size of the device is still not where you would like it to be as you would work in a big connected terminal. So there is some limitation on the device front. The other thing if you would look at is when you're logged on online, there is a way to authenticate yourself. But when you're using a device, so you will have to have a means which uniquely identifies the user with all the end backend applications. And when we talk of applications on the cloud, applications on premises, what is that way to uniquely identify the user that he is the same user and in the same session, if I am Raj who is logged in, I have authenticated myself. Yes, I give my credentials, it will fetch my PAN number and whatever remittances have happened. That may be from another application. So the other challenge that exists today is for the user who is using a smartphone device, uh, the backend applications need to uniquely identify that this is the same user and it is not one application. So that is where when you have a complex workflow or a business process which has to be serviced by probably multiple backend applications, the serviceability gets limited because of the difficulties in being uniquely able to identify the user in the very same session. So to address these two areas, uh, we had developed, and this is a reality, as I said, this is not vaporware. Uh, what you see in the blue box is a solution that we've developed called an ATOS cloud. What it does is exactly this, 
and if ever some of you happen to be in Pune, there is a lab where we can show a demo of it. So the customers that I said we have implemented solutions, they are using the ATAS cloud, which addresses this piece about uniquely identifying the user, no matter which device he's coming in. Having done that within the same session, it will pass on the information to whichever backend connected applications need to identify the user in the same session. And when I say backend, it is not something that is running in the customer's data center necessarily or in our servers. It can be anything. It can be a Microsoft Dynamics CRM hosted. It can be a Salesforce application. It can be an analytics reporting application running in the customer's premises. So the blue box, the light blue box that you see is really a broker, if you will, which is running on the ATOS cloud and has built-in connectors to other third-party enterprise applications. This has uh, significantly enabled us to implement some of the solutions that I was mentioning to you about uh, earlier. And uh, as we speak, there are some exploitations already happening. Come September this year, we'll have a major launch even in India by one of the largest mutual fund companies who will be using this ATOS cloud. Uh, I don't have a slide for it, but just in case uh, some of you are interested, even here we are talking of uh, imaging and uh, medical records. One of the challenges if you take a CT scan or an X-ray scan, the file size is going to be running into probably gigabytes, right? Now, you cannot, when you are in front of a doctor, transfer the file, I mean, instantly. At best, you will have to hand it over to someone or it has to be an asynchronous uh, way of transferring the file. So the purpose is defeated that while I'm in front of a doctor, if my scan has happened in some pathology lab, my doctor is not able to see my CT scans or MRI scans. So we've developed a, a device where it actually asynchronously uh, slices the image file, kind of streams the data onto the ATOS cloud, and then from there it can be pushed to any other customer application, if you will. This is going to be implemented by one of the leading hospitals in India where uh, they are using uh, Azure for the backend applications. And in addition, they'll be using the ATOS cloud for streaming the data and pushing it to their applications on uh, Azure. I'll uh, probably stop at that and we could go on and on. I am no mobility guru, but uh, I'll be very honest. I had to pick up what are some of the uh, instances where we have seen adoption of mobility. Should some of you be interested in what more we can do for you, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. And if you're in Pune, we can actually take you to our, we call it the Business Technology Innovation Center in Pune. And uh, this slide is specific to today. I thought uh, one of the areas where we do feel proud as an organization is what we've specifically done in the area of mobility. And this is I do feel proud to saying it's not just a pat on the back, but one of the leading analysts have acknowledged uh, the work that we've done here. But that's so much about uh, self-praise. I think it would be up to your experience how you experience it. So any questions, interest in this area, more than welcome to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chatterjee. Now I request Mr. Dhruv Dhawan to talk about uh, bring your own device, no more compromise in data security. That's a subject, Mr. Dhruv Dhawan. Mr. Dhruv Dhawan has over 11 years of rich experience in telecommunications, IT and product management. He has spent cumulative of nine years with Bharti Airtel.